I have made one of the most crucial pieces of camping equipment for myself ever. And it's so versatile. Stick around and learn how to do it yourself. <music> Greetings adventurers and welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Today we're gonna to be hitting our very first level of metalsmith since we switched over to the archetypes. Which means we're gonna be covering a bit of safety, a bit of metal selection, and the basics of like heating and forming metal with a hammer. So much fun. While figuring out what to do for a project like this, Maddie came up with this design here. It's basically taken from a bunch of these type of things that she found online of different ways to set up like a camp cooking area, which honestly is something we've always had trouble with. And we love to cook when camping. It's one of our favorite things to do, but we just never like bring the things to cook on, right? Like never have a whole setup. So Maddie just took all of the designs she liked from those other ones. We smashed them together into this one project and that's what we're gonna be making. Now, before I get started, let me just give one shameless plug. We have merch. We launched it just last week and a lot of you seem to really like it, which is super exciting. We're gonna keep changing out designs and stuff, so make sure you get the ones you like now because they're gonna go away eventually. Also, if there's any particular merch you'd like to see, leave it down in the comment section below. All right, without much further ado, let's jump right into it and level up this skill. First things first, before you decide to do any of this, I need you to be mentally prepared because I am the most, I'm the most tired I've ever been. I finished this project this morning. It didn't take me very long, but one underestimates exactly how much strain it puts on your body to just friggin' swing a hammer over and over again. I'm just saying, you're not under the same time constraints I am. If you're gonna do this, give yourself a little bit, give yourself a little bit of leeway, do a little piece at a time or something. Now, some of the basics you're going to need for this project is going to be a way to heat up the metal, like a little forge, something to strike the metal against, such as an anvil, and of course, something to strike the metal with, a hammer of some sort. Now, in order, the forge I'm gonna be using is this little hell pig I created. If you wanna learn how to make your own, you can check out this video right here. But also there's like a bunch of pretty cheap ones that you can buy on Amazon. Though I'll also leave in the description below, I have an even more basic one that I made out of a grill. It's not nearly as efficient, but it totally gets the job done. For my anvil, I'm using this bad boy here. This was gifted to me by somebody. Somebody else just left it in their garage and they asked if I could take it off their hands. And I was like, yes, please, absolutely. But if you do not have an anvil like this, which most of you probably won't, you can get away with pretty much anything that is, that is hard enough, like a piece of steel. For example, for a while, I was just forging on this thing right here, this block O steel, as long as you can secure it down really strong into something with a lot of mass. Like I was using this on a stump and then I like locked it in with nails all around it. And as long as the surface is big enough for you to strike on. It doesn't need to be big. Remember the, the actual like area that you're doing work on can only be as big as the head of whatever hammer you're using, right? So I've seen people on YouTube have little tiny like anvils that are like this big around, no lie. It doesn't have to be crazy. This one I am jazzed about though, cause it has this little hardy hole back here and also a, a smaller, I think that's called a pritchel hole, but it's basically places that I can like set other tools in eventually, or sometimes I actually use it to help me bend things. Really great to have, I'm so excited about it. Now the hammers I'm using are nothing special. These are just some small sledges that I got from like Home Depot years ago. They are not specifically blacksmithing hammers. I will definitely get some of those someday, but these will totally work to get you started. Also, it's a good idea to have like a long wrench of some sort to be able to handle the materials. Again, blacksmithing pliers that like keep you further away from the forge or whatever, fantastic, but we're all just starting here. To that, and if you are new here, the point of this show is that I am not a professional at these things. I'm learning as I go and I'm showing you the process so you can see that it's not hard to get started yourself. Oftentimes the hardest part is getting over the fear of starting. And I'm showing you that if a moron like me can get it done, you for sure can, absolutely. Before I start anything though, we are doing some safety checks, specifically on my little hell pig here. Over time, it's possible that those little joints have loosened up and I don't want any gas leaks. So I go ahead and I add some soapy water to all of those joints and pressurize it just to make sure no bubbles show up. If you're using flammable gas, it is a good idea to check your joints every once in a while just to make sure you don't have a leak. We don't want a flame showing up somewhere it's not supposed to be. With that all good, I light this sucker up and get it nice and warm so we can work in it. Now for materials, I wanted to make this beginner friendly so it would be like easy to access this stuff, but also be a strong enough material for the purposes we need it for. 
For this, I actually picked up some of this rebar here from Lowe's. I got nine pieces of rebar in half inch, five of them four feet long and four of them three foot long. I also picked up 10 of them that are three eighths of an inch by two foot long. Finally, I picked up some of this eighth inch round stock in four foot lengths and one quarter inch round stock also in a four foot length. Now you're gonna see of all the things we're making, you can break them apart and use them individually as well. So you for sure don't need to get this many pieces. Now a quick note on rebar, it's generally not very good quality metal. It wouldn't make like a good dagger or whatever. You can't heat treat it. I think there's like a different amalgamation of metals in there. They're gonna cure differently. But for practice and what we're doing here where we're just trying to learn how to shape the metal, it's for sure gonna be like a good starting point. And again, it's cheap. If you mess up, it's whatever. I think like one of those lengths was $4, not a big deal. And you can usually get them for free if you visit like a job site of some sort. And you know, they, they give them to you, not stealing. We're, you know what I mean. All right, with all that out of the way, let's shape some metal. So starting with those three eighth pieces of rebar by two foot, I stick one into the forge and let it heat until the tip of it's cherry red. So the first thing I'm making are these ones here that are in light green. They're basically just a straight piece with a loop at the end of it. So I wanted to make it kind of fancy, so my first thing to do is taper out the very end of this piece of metal. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little over rambunctious with these first, these first strikes. One, I was using the heaviest hammer I had, and two, I was using kind of the edge of the hammer. And I'll tell you why. The first thing I wanted to do was kind of stretch this material out and develop it down to a point. And I learned from watching various other YouTubers, <coughs> Alex Steele, excuse me, that you can use the, the edge of your hammer to really move material. And then you use the flat of your hammer to actually do like more detailed work and kind of plane that out. But I think the combination of having the heaviest hammer I had and also so aggressively hitting it this way was not the right way to go. With my lighter hammer, I was able to actually kind of salvage this a little bit and slowly taper that in, doing my best to clean up all of those hard hammer blows from earlier. Now you're gonna notice as I'm hammering, this is something I kind of learned as I was going, you can kind of, I guess, almost picturing it in my head that the metal is like clay. And if I wanted to move clay, I'd push on it in the direction I wanted it to go, right? So with the hammer, as I'm striking it, you're gonna see I'm striking in the direction I'm trying to pull it out to. Again, trying to land flat because I want this to be clean, but I'm, I'm trying to like pull the metal in that direction. If you're an experienced blacksmith, tell me if it's just in my imagination, but that totally seemed to work way better than just kind of hitting it over and over again. But as you can see here, halfway through this piece, there's still a lot of like really rough hammer blows that I have to work out. Not only that, but I'm also fighting the texture of the rebar, right? It has all those ridges and I want that area to be at least a little smooth. But through heating it and being a little bit more gentle with my hammer, I was actually able to get this taper pretty slick, but it took me a long time. Like that first piece, took way too long to do something so simple. Okay, but now we're gonna go ahead and make that little loop in the end of it. To do this, I just heat it up again, and I actually use my little hole here to give myself a bend. Then I use it again with just the tip, just for a second, in the opposite direction to give me that, that nifty little curve to it. Then it was off to the horn of the anvil to help refine that shape. Finally, I put it back on top of the anvil and just lightly tapped it into shape and closed that loop up. I also made sure to tap it while it was flat to keep it nice and straight and clean it off with a wire brush. And look at how cute that little design is, it's perfect. And it does what it needs to do by sliding around the thicker piece of half inch rebar. In our design, this is gonna fill a lot of functions, but one of them has to be like as a great system. So one of those pieces of bar needs to be able to slide through them. I'm not gonna lie, this stuff looks great. There's something about the look of like a nice piece of metal. I don't know, it just kind of speaks to me, the weight and the feel of it. Speaking of, this is actually a good segue for our today's sponsor, Fume. Mostly because look at this cool ass thing they sent me. It is so slick, like the metal on it and the weight. Oh my God, I love that so much. So if you don't know, Fume is a flavored air device. Basically it has this little slot in here in which you can put these flavored rods inside. Then you just inhale it to taste it. It has a little setting in the front to say how much oxygen gets through. Basically meaning more or less flavor. And I love this not just because the flavors are good, they're genuinely good, but also because they're, they were smart. You hear that? They made it like a little fidget device, which is honestly like the main thing I use it for. I'll just be kind of working on the computer, just kind of going like, it just feels good. It's a good way to like fiddle with, it tastes good. This one has become part of my everyday carry. So now that they've sent me this one, I can kind of alternate between flavors. I love it. So if you're like me and like to fidget with things or you're just trying to break a bad habit, Fume is a really great choice. 
It's completely natural, it uses flavored air, and instead of chemicals, it relies on natural flavors. Definitely check this out by picking up the Journey Pack today, which comes with this and some flavors. Just head to tryfume skilltree.com or scan the QR code and use the code skilltree to get 10% off of your Journey Pack today. So I need to make eight of these which is why this is really good practice because having done what I did here, I can investigate this piece and look at it and see what I did wrong, or at least what I could improve. So looking at this one, you can still see those little divots and marks from when I first went crazy with the heavier hammer. Also, the very tip is kind of broken because I let this piece of metal overheat and then hit it too aggressively on the end. Another thing I learned with rebar, by the way, because it does have different kind of metals in it, it's gonna heat at like different rates and it tends to wanna split apart because you have all these like different metals that are, aren't behaving well together that way. So overheating, especially as it gets like that small becomes a real issue. But to get around that though, I had to learn like control in the forge, right? Like moving the pieces I didn't want to be heating out of the fire a little bit, like further in, making sure that that main point of heat is right where I want it to work. I also learned that there's a lot of downtime, so I could totally do two pieces at once, sticking one right in the hottest point so it heats up and keeping the other off to the side and then just kind of swapping them as I work it. And this time around, having learned from that first one, my control was way better. I was able to get both of them down to a point pretty quickly within like two heats each. And then I was able to way more easily kind of bring that taper up, getting it nice and even as I went. My goal here wasn't to have like a fat piece and then a sudden taper. I wanted to very smoothly taper through. And I think I totally achieved that here. I also thought it was a good opportunity to learn how to use more of my anvil. So to bend this one over, I actually just used the very corner of the anvil, tapping a bit more gently and moving it to make this kind of lazy arc, which I then can refine a little bit more by my hammer on the flat of the anvil. And then again, use that edge to make my little flare off before finally hammering it shut. And with that, you can see how you don't need like a big fancy anvil to do this. You could do it with something much more modest. Which by the way, if you wanted to make your own anvil, I do have a video on making it out of railroad track right here. Just in case you stumble across a piece of railroad track, which I'm told is, is illegal actually. You have, to, you have to buy that from a very specific area, just, just so you know. But this time around, I was much more happy with how that came out. Just doing three of these so far, I have learned so much about how to move metal. This is something you definitely need to jump into and just kind of try over and over again, and you learn a lot just by doing. And I had a lot of doing to do. Like I said, I had eight of these to make, so three down, five to go, and I worked well into the darkness. Which forging metal as it gets dark is a vibe. I highly recommend it. I was tired and I was burnt, I'll talk about that in a second, but it was cool, I really liked it. Which gets into safety. You'll see I'm not really wearing gloves here. All the pieces of metal are long enough that generally I wasn't anywhere near the heat. And I kind of like that tactile feel of being able to feel what I'm doing a little bit better. That being said, when you have this many pieces of metal that all look identical and only one of them is hot, mistakes were made. I have like a wretched burn. I won't show you closer because it's kind of gross, but I for sure grabbed up the wrong one right where I shouldn't have and it was just instant, a little sizzle. Just don't be dumb. How about that? Don't be dumb. Okay, with that, we got all of those ones in the light green done. We got all these other ones to do, but it's gonna go a lot faster because it's a lot of the same skills over and over again. So like next we're doing these two larger dark green ones that I'm making out of the four foot pieces. Now this is a bit thicker of a metal, it's the half inch pieces, but it's all the same exact stuff. Getting it nice and hot, hammering it down to a point, making sure I'm nice and even and I get that taper looking good. But this time I go ahead and make a nice harsh bend right over the corner of the anvil. Then I bring that piece up onto the flat and slowly work it around the edge to make this arc. Then to make that arc just a bit more pronounced, I put it over the horn and use that to help shape it. I just followed suit doing this on both sides of this thing here. This not only gives me the ability to like turn it upside down so it has a hook on one side if I wanna hang something off of it, but also you're gonna see later when we have it down inside of those little eye hook ones we made, that little, that little hook sits right into where we wanna be. All right, going down our list, we now have these darker kind of question mark looking things. These are not only gonna work as kind of a base for our rack, but also as you're gonna see all by themselves, they're, they're really cool. I'm, I'm really happy with these things. You'll see it all together, trust me. But these are dead simple. I just heat it up, no tapering at all, and use my horn to bend it over. That, that sound wrong. I'm keeping it, but sound wrong. Then once I had the bend, I just continued hammering it over, shaping it to make a circle. 
Kind of working it to keep that opening nice and round so there's plenty of room to slide stuff through. Nope, still, still sounds weird to me. Now, when you kind of candy cane something over like that, you've got like the vertical here and then the loop is on the side. I really want that loop to be directly over the point of where all the weight's gonna be coming down so it doesn't pull it over. So to do that, I just reheat it again, put it over the side of my anvil and knock it until that loop is right over the center. Okay, so now instead of it being straight, if that loop has a nice angle to it, we're gonna be able to use it to hold stuff all by itself. Again, it's hard to explain until you see it, just trust me. To do this, I just lay this again back over the corner of the anvil and put a nice angle in the head of that hoop. You don't want it to be like a 90 degree angle. You still want to be able to slide a pole through it. So just kind of like a 45 will work. Okay, so for the last of the big rebar pieces, we're doing this kind of red one here with the hooky ends. I did change the design of the hook end though because the way I was seeing it in my head, it just, it made a bit more sense with some of the configurations. But again, just more practice in what we talked about before. This one I went ahead and I did taper out, trying to get it nice and even and beat away all of that other like texture that the rebar has. With that done, just like before, I put it over the edge of the anvil and this time gave it a 90 degree angle. Then I took that bent bit and put a hook in it around the horn. Again, if you don't have an anvil, you saw how I can make that just over the edge. You can do the same thing. It might take a little bit more kind of cleaning up with your hammer, but you'll get there. Once I was happy with that, I tried to heat up just the end where that bend is and just pulled it down with my pliers until I got pretty close to what I wanted and then finished that angle off with my hammer. This just gives me the super clean S curve here. Those little S curves can act as a place to like hold things. If you're using it by itself, you can hang stuff on it like a hook. Whole bunch of uses. Again, you're gonna see some of them soon. Now that's all we need for the assembly of the stuff that I wanna make. But I was having so much fun and found out that this was a really kind of easy thing to get into that I decided I wanted to make my own hooks to hang stuff on and a chain. I've never made a chain before and I really wanted to try it out. And that's where that eighth inch round stock from earlier comes in. All I did with this is get it nice and hot and then use my pliers to put a little loop in the top of it. Then I bent that into an arc to make this little S shape here. And to cut that off, I just heat it up, put it over the edge of my anvil, and then strike it with the hammer until the metal gets nice and thin. Then you can just kind of wiggle it off. After making a few of these, you can see how they kind of daisy chain together. And then all you gotta do is use your hammer to close up those loops. I just did this a bunch of times trying to refine that little S to make it as clean as possible. And I'm super proud of this little chain. Look at how cool that is. On one end, I have a little S hook. On the other hand, I have an open hook to be able to hang like pots and pans and stuff from. Is it ugly? Yeah, it's ugly, but I made it. It's my ugly little chain. And I got better with each link. And like next time I make a chain, maybe I'll clean them up a little bit so they don't have such harsh edges when I go to put them together. Like I learned all this as I was doing it and I made a chain. That's really cool. I'm very proud of that. Now for one last thing, I just wanted to make a big hook to hang whatever I want on. I also wanted to make it a little bit sharp because if I want to like smoke a meat or something like that, I smoke a meat, listen, don't listen to me. Anyways, I want to hang stuff up. I want a big hook. That's all I wanted. To do this, I used a slightly thicker bar. I think it was like quarter inch bar. Use the horn to shape it around to make a nice large hook. And then again, to bend that hook in on itself. Remember anywhere that like you're going to be putting force, you want the place that it'll, it'll be like hanging from above the point of force. So if I left the loop like out here, every time it hung, it'd wanna swing back so that it was in line with the, the point that it's being held up on. Finally, I just made this little loop at the top and cut it off. Then I heat it up again to add this little flare to it and shape it just a little bit further. Finally, I took my file and sharpened up those little points a little bit. One, to clean them up, but two, again, I'm picturing like being able to like hang a haunch of meat to it of some sort. It's just nice to have a sharp little hook. Or maybe I just wanted to make a sharp little hook. Why don't you stop asking me questions? Okay, one last thing I need to do for this project before we put it all together. And that is treat it for the elements because it is going to be like outside and camping. I want it to be at least a little waterproof, but I didn't want to paint it. First things first though, I need to clean off all the surface rust and dirt. This I just do with a wire brush. Then I bust out some of this melted beeswax here and just use a brush to wipe it all over the metal. Now the metal's cold, so the wax hardens as soon as it hits it, which is fine because I can see where wax is. Then I just used the propane torch to reheat that wax so it melts and covers everything and wiped away the excess with a rag. And look at how pretty that looks. The metal got a little bit darker from the beeswax, 
and you can feel it a little bit on the surface. All that said, it is going to be used in a fire pit. I don't know how well the beeswax will hold up over time. We'll see. But it's no different than having like a barbecue outside or whatever. It might rust. It doesn't matter. That's part of the thing. You clean it off, you keep going. Okay, but look at how dope this thing. I'm genuinely excited about this. All right, so configuration one, the tripod. These are with those ones with the little S curves in the top, and all you do is kind of like put one in and then hang the other loops off of it. They lock in together and can take a boatload of weight. Then I just use my little chain here, and bam, now you can hang a little pot over your fire. It's perfect. Oh my God, I love it so much. But let's say you have more things to cook and hang around or whatever. That's fine, you just take two of those uprights, put them into the ground, and then put the third across them. Now you have this nice bar from which you can hang whatever you want from. Just a heads up, it like just recently rained and I didn't want to hit the things into the ground with a hammer. I was being a little lazy. So if they seem a little wobbly, like they're just barely hitting the ground. <laughs> just, a, just a heads up. But, and here's where that kind of S-curve comes in in my brain. Because now you can totally use this thing as a little spit roast. Look at this, it's a little handle. I love that so much. And it doesn't have to be on the bigger uprights. On any of these, all of the pieces will fit together. So you can have one of the, like, the smaller ones with the, the little curve in them, and you can still have it right above the fire doing a little spit roast. So dope. Oh my God, it's so friggin' cool. Speaking of those little curvy things, now let's say you wanna have a full ass kitchen. You wanna cook for an army here. No worries, you just put these things in the four corners here, joined together by those, those little ones with the curved ends. Though in one of those ones with the curved ends there, you're gonna wanna thread on all of those, those eight smaller ones we made. By doing that, you can put the ends of the long one into those little, little base ones there, and then just use those short ones to cross the distance and make your grate. And Shazam, a full cook setup. Now you can put your pots and pans down. You can hang a pot up on a hook. Everything can be right over the fire where you need it. You can even adjust the grates to whatever size little cup or pot you have. It's so friggin' cool. Not only that, but I mean, if you don't need the uprights or you wanna use the uprights for something else, like holding a lantern, cause they're the perfect shape for that too, just outside of your tent, then you could just use the kind of grill top here. Okay, so remember how I was saying how those little curved loop ones have a bunch of different uses? This is one of my favorite ones, because if you don't wanna carry all that, you could just carry like one of those curved loop things because you could either use a stick or another one of these metal things, thread it through it, and it just kind of holds stuff straight. That curve in it makes it so that it like forces against itself, just holding a little thing out. So you can use it, you can swivel it over the fire, away from the fire. You can have it auto roast your marshmallows if you like automating that particular task. Hell, I bet you could even use it for like fishing. If you set up multiple rods, it'll, it'll totally hold just a little fishing rod there. You just angle it down a little bit. That would work too. Huh. So many uses. Oh, and also if you just didn't want to carry all that stuff, but you still wanted a cooking set, all you really need are like three of the smallest ones. They're only like this big. But look, if you thread them through each other, you can just balance them on top of some rocks and you have a little cooking surface. And if you didn't want to depend on balancing them on rocks, you could just bring three more and use them as a stand. Again, I didn't hammer them into the ground, but you get it. Heck, you can even use just those three to make a tiny mini tripod to hang like a little, little camping cup on or something. And it's so strong, like it holds my body weight. No problem. You could even make this nifty little setup here that has a similar kind of arm function to just hold something right over a small fire. And I'm sure there are a bunch of other configurations or other things you can use these shapes for. I had so much fun sitting there just putting them together in different ways. I really like this project. It taught me a lot about moving metal, specifically how to like, like I, I talk about it with leather crafting too, like don't hammer the metal. Like the hammer, you lift the hammer and you let it you let it do its thing. If you want it to like hit harder, you could use a little bit heavier of a hammer, but you're, I'm not like pushing into it. I'm, I'm working to lift the hammer and then I'm letting the hammer do the work. That helped a lot because like actually striking it hurts. And a force like travels into your joints, it's a thing, it hurt. <laughs> Anyways, I won't belabor it much more. I highly recommend you try something like this though. Start off small, maybe just those little ones there or any other project that has kind of a repetitive thing. Do it assess what you just did, and if you don't like it, that's all right. Learn from that and then figure out how to change it and try it again. 
Doing those eight pieces taught me way more than all of the videos I watched to try to get ready for this. Now, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, why don't you give me some of that like it love and don't forget to subscribe so you know when I release new content. Also, if you haven't joined already, you definitely want to check out our Discord. Look at these projects that are listed in there. This is the most talented community I've ever been part of. Every day they're dropping stuff in there that I'm just in awe of. I swear y'all teach me more than I've ever been able to show on any of these videos. So if you like this show, you'll definitely like that community. Everybody in there rocks. All right, y'all, thank you so much for letting me do this. I love you dearly and I'll see you next time. Until then though, keep leveling up, you. You made it to the end screen. YouTube loves it when you do that. It's a fantastic way to support this channel. Another fantastic way to support this channel is by donating these people's noble ranks. These are our Patreon members and honestly, my freaking heroes. We wouldn't be able to do any of this without you. No rebar is only four bucks a month. About like 18 of them. That adds up. These projects get expensive. Yeah, like these people are making it. Thank you to all of you. I love you so much.